Duck hunters love to tell stories about hitting the migration just right and limiting out. However, that's not always reality. Duck hunting is hard work, and the untold story is one of missed shots, of a broken gear, <laughs> and hopefully a few laughs. But if you put in the time and play your cards right, Pintails. a northerly wind might bring some birds your way. Never works out how you want it to. I'm Sean Weaver, a former hunting guide, TV producer, and a guy who's just obsessed with waterfowl hunting. But limits of birds aren't what keep duck hunting alive, and that's what I want to talk about. This is Duck Lore. Flyover country. That's what a lot of people would call Nebraska. And while it might be less than majestic to certain folk, I guarantee that somewhere, a duck hunter lets out a deep sigh when they overhear someone bad-mouthing Nebraska for being boring, flat, and featureless. It is so much more than that. In fact, it's a paradise for those addicted to duck hunting. Specifically, these are the Sand Hills, a set of vegetation-stabilized sand dunes in Nebraska and South Dakota. The sand hills can't effectively be tilled and planted for row crops, so the native grasses remain intact and a rich resource, not only for cattle ranchers, but for migratory birds making their way through the central flyway. And even though he's not an addict yet, I'm joined on this episode by Meat Eater's own Giannis Patelis. To start, we're driving around scouting a combination of public and private. If we find ducks on public, great. If we find them on private, We'll knock on doors until we're fortunate enough to get permission. You see all those? Yeah. There's a lot of big green heads in there. Yeah. You see that red grass there in there? Uh-huh. It's called smartweed. Yep. That is... Is that what they're eating? Mm-hmm. They love that. We know there's ducks here, so I think we pop out of here and go check another spot. There's a deceptiveness here. Even though it might look barren at first glance, thousands of small alkaline lakes and sloughs are nestled between these hills, creating a waterfowl oasis of seeds and freshwater shrimp that provide nesting and migration habitat for ducks. Oh my goodness. Here, getting a good scout in like this is important. <laughs> First and foremost, I've never duck hunted the sand hills, and I need a day to even find the areas that regularly hold birds. The thing I do like about this one more is that you have that cattail, good cattail edge to hide in, versus yeah. the other one, the other spot there's not a great hide. Well, that's a lot of birds. What's your guesstimate? A number? Over a thousand. It's hard to know. There's just so many scattered through all the food. Yeah. No, we were probably only seeing half of them. Right. Yeah, these ducks don't, don't act like ducks that have been hunted. These ducks are happy, comfortable ducks. Yeah, I sure like that little spot out there where it kind of, that kind of funnels down mm -hmm. between those two cattail points. Yep. Especially if you think we can just walk right across that opening. Ideally, it just kind of ends up being your classic old school marsh hunt, you know? Mm-hmm. Something you'd see in some old duck hunting painting. I've been trying my whole life to place myself in one of those paintings, so if you could help me do that tomorrow morning, <laughs> we'll be buddies. Now we have a great hide plant, plenty of birds, and most importantly, a food source like Smartweed to keep them keyed in on this specific sleuth. It's a quiet morning under a full moon, and it's early. Mid-season marsh hunts like this always make for early hours. Birds will be on the move right at shooting light, you have to carry everything you need for the day, and the mud can really slow you down. A sled is an easy solution to getting your gear in and keeping things dry. We're throwing out a relatively lightweight decoy spread here. A few dozen mallards and pintail decoys, 
some spinners, and a couple splashing decoys to move water around on this windless morning. The decoys are spread out to replicate comfortable feeding birds. Definitely the most high-tech spread I've ever hunted over. <laughs> it's gonna be one heck of a sun. I've been wanting to make this hunt happen for a long time. Right out front. Oh yeah. Now they would have been close enough to shoot or no? Yeah. Yep. That's a Drake Mallard there. Working. The single? Yeah. There's not a breath of wind. Man, I thought they were gonna dump in. You want to shoot that? Good job, Sean. All right, we're gonna see a lot of birds move here for a minute. Up top, swing around the back. Get ready, it's a mallard. Get ready, honest, this is a Drake mallard. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Nice shot, Giannis. Okay, we woke everybody up. You know, I always say anybody can kill him on the first shot, but it takes a real composed hunter to uh, miss and then get him on get the second. Get him on the second. Right here. Kill him. Man, they were moving. Coming on your side. Oh, gadwall. Pintail. That's a Drake pintail there. That was a pintail? Yeah, that's a Drake pintail there. Come on. Five green wing teal don't give us a look. Where'd they go? Watching those Drake Mallards just suck right into that smart weed like that, like yeah. it's nothing. I think we take a dozen decoys and get out there. Here's a Drake on your right. Yep, let's see if he'll work. <laughs> I'll go on the record to say that I really, really don't like moving setups mid-hunt. You gonna grab the sled? Sometimes, though, it's the only way to keep that action going. So we make a shift, moving our decoys into the smartweed to capitalize on where these birds actually want to be. We're not in our new spot for five minutes, and the birds really start working. Can I shoot it? It's created problems for myself. That's a... That is a pretty bird. That's a stud drake widgeon there. That's a green wing teal that just went by. This one's coming back. Maybe. Get ready. Get ready, right up front, Giannis. Shoot it, shoot it. Nice shot. Oh. Thank you. Nice shot, Giannis. That's another stud green head there. Very orange feet. Yeah, both of them are like that. Bright orange. Should be another good plucker. You think? Yeah.
We're getting a nice mess of green heads. Well, I only have one more duck to go. Get ready, y'all. That's just the most frustrating thing. I mean, we could try to make more of a hole right here. Shoot one, shoot one, shoot one. Pintail. They're gonna give you another chance. There was my opportunity. Shoot one, shoot one, shoot one. <laughs> that was the Hail Mary. Pintail numbers are below their uh historical trend anyway, so it's an okay duck to so miss. So I'm being a good conservationist? <laughs> right. <laughs> Gotta save some for nesting season, I guess. Then, from the heavens, a migrating flock tips their wings. A giant flock of pintails. Giant flock of pintails coming down. On your left, giant flock. <laughs> nope. Pintails. So pick a drake if you see one. You're looking for white. You're looking for white. Okay. Nice shot. Get on it. It's wounded. Oh, that was sweet. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. And just like that, Giannis shoots as pretty of a drake pintail as you'll ever see in October. I'm guessing that was a migrator flock. Those are good eating, right? I, I'll take them. I'd say pintail, other than blue wing, I'd say it's blue wing teal and pintail are the best too. Really? Yep. I'll take a I'll take a plucked pintail against pretty much anything. If these two come in, I'm gonna take the one to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. Swans, like canvasback ducks, are another of North America's prized conservation success stories. Coming back from near extirpation, there is now a legal season for tundra swans in several states across the country. Duck coming at us here. Come on, come on, dude. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Nice, great shot. Man, those are pretty. Look at that thing. Look at those. Yeah, big, nice curls, big orange feet. That's what you come here for. <laughs> Might make another pass. Get ready. Oh. oh. Son of a buck. We might have missed a couple here and there, but Yanni and I don't have much to complain about today. With bluebird skies and darn close to a couple of limits, it's about that time to send some feathers into the wind. Man, this duck is perfect. That was a fantastic morning. Oh, that was good. We needed that wind a couple hours earlier. Yeah. I don't think wind's gonna be the problem tomorrow though, with that no. storm blowing in. Now we just gotta find some more ducks. Once our birds are plucked, wings left on for legal transportation, we head out in search of our next spot. And while we're watching a new slough, I get a call back from a nearby rancher whose land we asked to hunt. When we went to first ask for permission, we saw a slough not far off his driveway packed with birds. This is Sean. Hey Jeff, 
Yeah, hey, how's it going? Mostly Gadwall and some mallards. The best part is that it's set up perfectly for the strong north wind we expect in the morning. Not a lot of cover here. No. I mean, if you're sitting down, it's right not there. bad, right? But I think we should grab some of those sticks from the tree and stuff and kind of build a little front edge of this. Yep. Get some tumbleweeds from the fence line. I love making a good brush blind, Sean. The front that's been moving in finally gets here too. Clouds, dropping temps, and some precipitation all bode well for a north wind. While our height is okay, it's not spectacular, and there are no shadows to hide in. The birds are a bit leery of our setup and start clustering in the middle early on. This is the problem with hunting big water like this. They can, they can just land in the middle and be indecisive. They're not flaring off our spread, but they know something's, something's up. Despite the big water, we still get a few opportunities, but we really just need to change something up because there is no shortage of birds here. Sorry, I should have shot earlier. Watch him. He's going to go down. Where did all those ducks come from? Just, they just came off the water. On the deck, straight up, huh? Kill him, kill him. Ah. Gosh, when they catch that wind. They get, they get going fast. Straight out front. Could, uh, you could take a dozen decoys down there and sit there and try to shoot some of those mallards. I could wait here and sure. we can bounce birds back and forth. I don't know if it'll work, but it'll, you certainly can't. <laughs> certainly can't you work worse than, than we are this. right now. Yeah. Faced with either sticking to the original plan and scraping by or rolling the dice on a change, we opt for the latter. Giannis grabs a half dozen decoys and heads to the east side of the slough, hoping that we'll be able to bounce birds between each other and keep them from clustering in the middle, while I stick it out where we began. One, huh? A little disappointing. It's better than nothing. I think Giannis might have just got one. Come on over me. 
Oh yeah, he just got buzzed by that green wing. Oh, here's some. No, behind her. I'm trying. what you would hope to see in a duck hunting painting. Like sitting behind a homemade brush blind on the edge of a pond, small little decoy spread. Wind, cold, a little bit of rain. I got my last duck. So I'm gonna go meet back up with Giannis. Pick up these decoys. Not the prettiest hunt. It's hard. Big water's hard. Well, you get any more? No. I shot at a few more. I don't think they like the spot anymore, man. I feel like they're coming in, coming in, and then... They like the middle too much. Just out of their... But when even when they're coming, they're getting somewhere, and then they just... Drift off, yeah. Yeah. Splitting up was a good way to kill a few ducks, but it's not ideal. If you duck hunt enough, you'll have plenty of days like this one, where the birds aren't quite finishing how you want, and the whole day leaves you longing for a little bit more understanding. What were they seeing? Was it my hide, my decoys, or did these ducks just flat out know better than to go near the shore? I guess it's just part of the hunt, part of the fun and learning these birds. But I hope for your sake, mixed in with those tougher days, is just one migrating flock of pintails that makes you feel like the luckiest man in the world.